my beautiful Aquarian friends and welcome to your horoscope for November of 2020 where Aquarius this month it's actually kind of interesting because yes the energies are going to get moving forward and I think that that is a deep breath we have all been waiting for for quite some time we've got Mercury coming out of retrograde Mars coming out of retrograde Neptune who acts as your financial planet in the general coming out of retrograde but also being impacted by this eclipse this month we have an eclipse this month so lots of forward motion that I think becomes available and that nice deep breath but also it seems to be a month for you which I think you're the perfect energy to have this going on right now where it's like the youth or people that are are young like you're needing to have a fair amount of patience with them this month it's really interesting there's a lot of swapping and changing ideas and there is some transformation available for you in it. So it's really a level of patience this month with people who are um, younger, I think. So it's it's kind of interesting to see how this is going to play out. As well, there are career changes happening this month, which don't necessarily have to mean that you're completely leaving the job or anything like that. It's more so that you're just making adjustments in that particular area. Now, before we get into that, Aquarius, the eat and greets are happening this month. We've got Omari Martin, Mecca Woods, Demetrius Bagley, um, Vanessa Montgomery, Matthew Wiemet, uh, Jezebel will be here, Sonal will be here talking about Vedic astrology, Judith Hill will be here talking about the nodes and medical astrology. So really a lot of good people showing up to uh, teach to our community. And if you'd like to enjoy the eat and greets ad free, you can come and join me over on Patreon, okay? All right, Aquarius, let's get in here and do a breakdown of what's going on this month. At the beginning of the month on the 3rd, we've got Mercury coming out of retrograde in the energy of Libra. Now, this is going to light up your ninth house space, publishing, marketing, broadcasting, education, anything that expands you out from where you are. But more importantly, where I think that this takes you is this idea with Mercury and Libra um, into the space of which what's going on in your relationships around your expansion, your relationships with faith and beliefs and who's speaking into your life and these kinds of things because there just seems to be this real rethinking or adjustment in communication in relationships and how you're connected to other people even organizations or faith-based organizations this is the ninth house or philosophic based organizations you know in the ninth house we could also be seeing things changing around a political belief system for sure that's morals ethics politics all of that seems to live towards the top of the chart so whatever's happening here what you want to know and you want to take note of is the fact that mercury is direct now out of retrograde sign those contracts make decisions in this area if there's been educational changes go ahead and trust your intuition and trust that your mind is online to be able to make some of these decisions now on the 10th mercury is going to move forward into the energy of scorpio and that lighting up the 10th house space so really bringing career to a highlight this month and with mercury and scorpio here this has been mercury's already been here and been here at this degree already. So until Mercury gets past 12 degrees, you don't really see, I think, a lot of the career changes happening or a lot of the reputation changes happening. But as he comes back home today, you've been able to be very deeply observational to your feelings, your drives, your thinking, your motivations around this area of your life. And now that Mercury is direct, I think you're able to make some decisions, especially am I aligned with the right kind of people? Do I have the right kind of partnerships in my life? Am I being a partnership in my career zone or community zone whatever you're doing that you're putting your hands out and and building and creating something to give to the world this mercury being here in scorpio will definitely help you do that and i think it brings a fair amount of emotional intelligence to work as well if someone's pushing your button in the area of work politics um, marriage, even in your family, this is a great place for emotional intelligence to kick in and say, why are they getting my goat so much? You know, it's really a lovely energy. On the 12th, we're going to see Jupiter and Pluto come together in the energy of Capricorn. So just back in the 12th house space for you. Now we've seen Jupiter and Pluto come together three times this year. This is number three. We saw them in April. We saw them in June and we see them now. In April, as they came together in this 12th house space, it started to be this energy, I think, for you of increased stamina, a lot of patience, um, service to other people but the thing about it is is that when Pluto and Jupiter come together we begin to build this immense capacity for being efficient and effective at handling our challenges and being successful with them so 
what did you start back here in April in this 12th house space, whether it was a project, whether it was a prayer, whatever it was in the 12th house space, treating an illness, what was it that was happening here? Because then an adjustment came to that in June and they were both retrograde and you were going back over this area or breathing in the changes that have happened. And now as it comes full circle, this is this energy here in the 12th house where I'm telling you the stamina and the patience to really acknowledge your own inner resources that you have that you are stronger than i think you knew even coming into 2020 certainly stronger than i think you knew you were at june in june and now you're able to kind of sonic the hedgehog make this area really really work with jupiter and pluto here because you've got the skills and the resources especially from the inside out to be able to do so on the 14th, we see Mars coming out of retrograde in the energy of Aries, lighting up your third house space. Now, as Mars was retrograde, he was asking you to relook over your desires for what you're studying, what you're talking about, how you're talking about things, your relationship with your siblings. You know, this is an energy as Mars was retrograde. It was like, do I have the desire to continue to show up in this area of my life in this way? And whether the answer was yes or no, Mars was also helping you in Aries get a strategy together for how you're going to move that thing forward after the retrograde happened. So here on the 14th, Mars is out of retrograde, not in full motion yet, but definitely releasing some energy. So now you get to either aggressively move forward in your words, in your study, with your relationships, in your contracts, or assertively show up as the Aquarius you had decided back here that you wanted to be because of what you desire this area of your life to look like. So I look forward to seeing what that looks like for you. And some of you, it looks like maybe you went to or you started going to um, real estate school, real estate schooling, something around selling houses or some version of working in real estate. And now this is able to, to move forward quite assertively for you. On the 15th, we've got a new moon happening in the energy of Scorpio, again, bringing the energy into the 10th house. So I would ask you to plant your seeds of intention. You know your heart, you know your desires, you know your passion in this area of your life. Plant your seeds of intention. Where would you like over the next four weeks this area of your life to really transform so that you can see what you can do, what you can create with that, that fire, that energy in your belly, even though Scorpio is... Um, a water sign, it creates a lot of ferocity down here in that, you know, root chakra from where we build and we create life from. So this new moon could be welcoming business to your table, could be welcoming opportunities for promotion or stepping up or stepping out in some way. But it comes from this place that you found the desire, um, you observed your own motion, you observed your own transformation and interaction at the beginning of the month. Now, what do you want here? Plant those seeds of intention at this particular new moon, okay? As well, on the 21st, we've got Venus coming into the energy of Scorpio. So she's literally magnetizing this area. And I love to see Venus come towards your career house. I just do. You know, it could be an influx of sales if you sell things or an influx of money in some way, shape, or form. Or it works in a social way where it's able to connect you with other people who are able to increase the abundance of this area of your life. Now, one of the downfalls or the lower vibe of Venus in Scorpios can be very jealous and very possessive. So if you've got something like that going on at work, I would say get to the root of it. Um, see what's going on down there so that you don't make decisions, you don't say things and stuff like that that are actually going to cause more problems instead of that kind of evolutionary living in this particular area and letting that career grow. On the 29th, oh, somebody's getting married. Happy getting married. On the 29th, though, we've got Neptune moving into the energy or Neptune moving direct in the energy of Pisces. And this is in your second house. So just next door neighbor right there. Now, as Neptune comes direct in the energy of Pisces, because it acts as your financial planet, one of the things I think happens is that you get a lot of financial clarity like financial clarity comes back online it's almost like we you cannot forget that we have to create a financial plan in our lives in a place that's kind of intangible it's the the vision and then we bring it down and make that vision tangible but i think what's been happening for some time with the neptune direct and and retrograde is it's like you can't really tell what's what's 
what's the dream and that dream is just super big and it's just something that I want to be when I grow up in my kid heart or the dream that is actually achievable. So now as Neptune is out of retrograde, I think you get to see that space between dreams and realities and what has to be done in the strategy to make the dream happen because it can be a reality. And that's going to be around your finances and definitely your self-esteem. Now, as we close out this month, Aquarius, we're going to end with a full moon lunar eclipse happening in the energy of Gemini, so lighting up your fifth house space. This is that place where I tell you from the 10th house work that you're doing all the way to this eclipse here, I think that there is this patience with youth, patience with things that are new, patient with things that are young. Now, with this lunar eclipse, it says that something needs to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted, okay? So we're going to create a shift here. This is in the energy of Gemini. So the way that we speak, the way that we think, words mean things. The way that we speak to one another, the way that we allow people to speak to us means things. And specifically around children, I feel like the youth or the young in your life need so much patience right now and they need the extra um, affirmations from you in some way. So there's could also just be you're doing a lot of talking to the kids. You're doing a lot of talking as a kid to your parents, right? Or you're speaking into something where there's just this element of um, of youth on the table. So kind of keep that in mind. Now, other things that could definitely be happening is, you know, if you started a business or a project or something like that, um, and you're getting to course correct it just a little bit here. Does the wording sound right on your website? You know, or does that need an adjustment? Are you marketing and networking this thing out there for the times that we're in? Does it fit what we're doing? So there's a lot of decision making and communication happening around this fifth house arena that is just the place where whether it's the children or the business or true love, you take a risk in this area. But we need to make sure that our thoughts and our words are definitely in alignment with the strategy that we'd like to take forward to make this area come alive okay all right Aquarius I think it's gonna be a good month expect for things to be moving a little bit more quickly than I think that they have been through the rest of the year and certainly that will be the truth in December as well but we kick it off right here in November so enjoy that energy I don't know if it'll be good bad indifferent it depends on your opinion on it but I think it'll definitely be a little bit different all right like this video comment share subscribe I love you and I'll see you soon Aquarius bye my friends